Have you ever wanted to get your elements in Revit API based on specific parameter value? And if you did, you might have come across element parameter filter class. I don't know about you, but I avoided all Revit API filters for a very long time when I started. They looked confusing, so I didn't even bother trying to understand them. But the good news for you is once you use them a few times, they start to make a lot of sense. So in this video, I'll break down for you how to use element parameter filter so you can filter your elements based on parameter values. And also to make sure you understand it well, I'll provide you a free PDF guide that has many pages on Revit API filters and filtered element collector. And to make sure that this video is worth watching, we're going to create two functions to get elements by type or family name. Isn't that what you always wanted? Let's learn how to do this. First of all, let's open Revit API documentation and have a look at this class. I'm going to use Revit 2023 and we're going to look for element parameter filter. In here it tells you it's a filter used to match elements by one or more parameter filter rules. And if you're going to scroll down, there's going to be example in C sharp. And don't worry, we can always easily copy it. And nowadays we can go to chat GPT and ask it to translate it to Python. I'm just going to type here translate to Python and paste all this code. Then I'm also going to write do not change anything and don't add anything extra. And now while ChatGPT is translating the C-sharp snippet into Python, we're going to go back to documentation and actually explore this element parameter filter class. I'm going to click here on the class and you can see there is a constructor. And if I'm going to click on it, and in here there are four different constructors. The first one takes filter rule, then we can provide a list of filter rules, so we can create multiple rules for one element parameter filter. And then there are these two, which also have additional parameter called boolean, and it allows us to reverse the filter. So for example, if you're going to create a filter to get all your walls higher than 100 centimeters, and you're going to apply this boolean, it's going to get all the walls that lower or equal to 100 centimeters. But in our case, I'm just going to use the first filter, because that's going to be more than enough. And here you can see that it takes one single argument, which is filter rule. And we can open and have a look inside of it. In here, I can click on the class, and I will see that there are no constructor methods for this class. And this is because this is a base class for all the other classes. If I'm going to scroll down to inheritance hierarchy, I can choose from one of the other classes. For example, there is filter category rule, filter inverse rule, but in our case, we're interested in filter value rule, because this is what element parameter filter needs. Let's click on it. Again, if you're going to click on the class, you'll see there are no constructors for this rule as well. But if you're going to scroll down to inheritance hierarchy, you can see that there are two additional classes that are created from this filter. There is filter numeric value rule, and there is filter string rule. And it's very simple to choose one of them. If you work with parameter which has a storage type of string, meaning text, then we need to use filter string rule. And all the other storage types, they take filter numeric value rule. And this rule is going to be valid for all numeric storage types, such as integer, double, element ID, and even yes no parameter because it's recorded at 0 or 1. So since we are going to create a filter to check type or family names, we're going to use filter string rule. Let's open it tells us that it's a filter rule that operates on string values in Revit project. That's exactly what we need. And if we're going to click on the class, finally we can see a constructor. So we can go and have a look how to create it. Before I'm going to go through all of these values, I want to mention one thing. At the moment I'm in 2023, and if I'm going to go to the previous year, you'll notice that there are two methods available. And one of them is going to be obsolete. Because before 2022, this is how we used to create this filter string rule. It had one extra argument in the end, which was case sensitive. And starting from 2023, this method is obsolete and only this one is available. So we'll have to address that during coding as well. Now in here, it needs three arguments. It needs value provider, evaluator and rule string. And the best way to explain all of this argument is to go to Revit view filters and have a look how we create them. Now I will select something like windows. And now look right here in the corner where it says filter rules. In here, first of all, we need to choose a parameter or parameter value provider. In our case, we want to look for family name. Then we need to choose an evaluator. We want to choose equal, does not equal, contains, begin with, and so on. For this example, let's take contains. And lastly, we need to take a value. In here, I'm going to write fe2. I'm going to create this filter, add it to this view, so we can see all of these windows in blue. And these are the windows that we're going to try to get with element parameter filter. So now let's come back in here and look at it again. There are three arguments, value provider, evaluator or rule string. And this is exactly the same arguments that I showed you in Revit UI. We chose parameter, we chose evaluator and we provided value to compare it to. Also, if you remember a few minutes ago, we gave a C-sharp snippet to ChatGPT to translate it to Python. 
Let's go and check it out and try to understand how to use this snippet. To use element parameter filter, first of all, we need to create parameter value provider by providing element ID of our built-in parameter. In this example, we are getting room area parameter. Then we need to choose one of the evaluators. And you can see them on the screen. And again, they're divided in string evaluators and numeric evaluators. In this example, they use filter numeric greater. The next, they define a rule value, which is going to be 100 feet. Now, once you create these three arguments, you can create an actual filter rule. In this case, they use filter double rule because they work with numbers. But in our case, we'll have to use filter string rule. It then takes three arguments. It takes parameter value provider from here. It takes our evaluator, which is this one. And then it takes rule value, which is this one. And also, filter double rule also have a tolerance, which means that you can define how close the numbers have to be to your defined value. Once you have your filter rule, you can create a filter by using element parameter filter and providing this rule. And then we can use filtered element collector by providing the document and use method where passes and provide this filter. And then this filter will be applied to this collector. Also on the bottom, they show you how to reverse this filter. They just provide here an argument true. And now instead of getting greater than 100, it's going to get less or equal to 100. At the moment, it still might be quite confusing. So let's go to our PyCharm and actually create our snippet ourselves. I'm going to use my PyRevit template that I created a while ago. And if you want to use it as well, then check out in the description. I'm going to leave a link where you can get it. I'm going to zoom in it. We have our title and description. We have a few imports, have our variables, and then our main section. Let's clear it up and start coding. So let's break it down in the steps that we're going to code. First of all, we need to choose our parameter. Then we need to choose our evaluator and provide value which we want to compare. Then by using these three variables, we're going to create our filter rule. And then we can provide this filter rule to create our element parameter filter. And lastly, we're going to apply this filter to filtered element collector to get our elements. So first of all, let's get our parameter. I'm going to create a variable for element ID of our parameter. And we're going to get element ID of built-in parameter. And for this example, I want to start by getting family name parameter. And in here, we have a few matches. If you're not sure which parameter to choose from, you can always go to Revit, select one of the families, then in Add-ins tab, in Revit lookup, click Snoop selection. Then in here, we're going to go to parameters and look for family name parameter or any other parameter that you need. And go to definition. And then here, you're going to have built-in parameter. And you can see in my case, it's symbol family name parameter. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it here instead. Then we need to take this element ID of the parameter and create parameter value provider. Then the next we want to choose evaluator. And in my case, I want to choose filter string contains, but you can also choose from any other that you can see on the screen. Then the next is the value and I'm just going to write fe tube. Then next we can combine all of these arguments and create filter string rule. I'm just going to write f rule equals filter string rule. And then we're going to provide parameter, evaluator and value. And also, if you remember in Revit API docs, before Revit 2023, we also had an extra argument for case sensitivity. So let's address that. So first of all, we need our application variable. Then we can get version number of Revit and convert it into an integer. Once we have our Revit here, we can make an if statement. If Revit version is 2023 or higher, then we're going to use this snippet. Or otherwise, we're just going to use the same snippet, but we're going to add false in the end. Now, you created a rule. You chose your parameter, you chose your evaluator, and chose your value. And with this, we created filter string rule. Now we can create our filter. And it's very simple. I'm just going to call element parameter filter and provide our filter rule that we created. And lastly, we can apply this filter to filtered element collector. Let's create a collector. Then I'm going to filter it only to windows by using off category. And then we're going to apply where passes and then provide our filter. Also, we can provide here where element is not element type, so we only get instances. And lastly, we convert it to elements. And to actually check what we're getting in our Revit, let's change our selection to these elements. First of all, we need to get our element IDs. And in here, we write to element IDs. And to change selection in Revit, we're going to write UI doc selection, set element IDs, and provide a list of element IDs. Now we can go to Revit and actually test. I created my button in EF Tutor. So let's click on it. And I can see that I have 57 elements selected. And if I'm going to isolate them, you can see that these are all the elements that marked in blue color because we also created here a filter which is similar to what we are getting in our filtered element collector. We chose parameter of family name, we chose evaluator contains, and then we chose a value of fenster2. 
so you can see that this snippet actually works. Let's go back to PyCharm and refactor our code and create a function so it's always easy to get our elements by type or family name. I'm going to select all of this and make a duplicate and then I'm going to comment it out so it doesn't do anything. Then somewhere here on the bottom we can rewrite it into a function. This way you have access to both snippet before and after we made it a function. So I'm going to create a function and call it get elements by family name. I'm going to have one argument which is family name and then we're going to move all of this to the right. Let's add a doc string function to get elements by family name. Now in this case we're going to leave the same parameter because it already works for family name. Then in evaluator I'm going to actually change it to filter string equals. So instead of contains we're going to get equals. Then for value we're going to use our family name. Then in here nothing is going to change. We have our parameter, evaluator and value. And also for older Revit API versions we provide here a boolean. Then same here, there's nothing to change, we have our rule and we create our filter. Then in here we're actually going to create our return statement. I'm going to write return, then I don't want to filter only windows, I want to go through all elements and I don't want to return element IDs, I want to return actual elements. So we're going to write two elements. Then we don't need this line anymore and in here you can decide, do you want to get your instances or you want to get your types? Because if you would write where element is element type, it's only going to return you element types of this family. But if you're going to write where element is not element type, we're going to get instances. And this is exactly what I want to do. Now let's actually go and test it. I'm going to copy the name of the function and in here we need exact name of our family. Let's go to Revit and I'm going to select for example this one and I'm going to paste it here. So this is going to return us a list of elements. Now let's convert it into list of element IDs. Since it's a Python list, we also need to convert it into typed list. I'm going to write list of element IDs and then provide this Python list. And now, same as before, we can change our selection with UI doc selection set element IDs. And now, let's go to Revit and try this function. Once I'm clicking it, I can see it changed my selection to one window. I'm going to isolate it. It's right here. And it has exactly the family name which we used for getting our elements. Now, let's just duplicate this function. And this time, we're going to get elements by type name. We can go back to Revit. In add-ins tab, we're going to snoop our selection. We're going to go to parameters, find the parameter which is called type name. And then in definition, you can check the name of this parameter. In this case, it's symbol name parameter. Let's copy it. And we want to use it here instead of the family parameter. We could also rename it. Now, again, we can decide do we want equal, contains, or any other evaluator. This value is just what provided in the function. We create our rule, we create our filter and we are applying it to our filtered element collector. Now to use it, let's go to Revit and choose one of the type names. I'm going to select this window. I can see that it has 2000 by 2250. Then back in our code, I'm going to change name of this function. I'm going to get elements by type name. And this time we're going to provide this type name that we just copied. Then again, we're going to convert it into element IDs and set our selection just to verify what kind of elements we are getting. Now let's go back to Revit and click on this button. And you can see I have 22 elements selected and if I'm going to isolate, you can see that they all have the same type name, even though they have different family name. This is how we use element parameter filter to filter elements in filtered element collector. And if you want to learn more about element parameter filters, you can get the PDF guide that I made for you. Link is going to be in the description. In here, there are a lot of pages showing you how to use filtered element collector, including a lot of examples. There are also some pages about filters. Here's a page about element parameter filter. Or you can also pause this video and read about it once more in a little bit different perspective. There are also examples here how to use it for the text, but you already saw how we did it in the video. Here's how we use for the numbers. In this case, this is example how to get walls with a height of 50 centimeters. I note that there is also going to be a fourth argument, which is going to be tolerance. Because we can set the tolerance how far from our number we want to look. I hope you found this video useful. And as usual, happy coding, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Goodbye.